microamp. So, uh, my voltage levels, corresponding voltage levels will come down and I may have an issue with identifying a 0 and a 1. So, ideally if, if, if only I had a large amplification factor here, if only my RD is let us say 10 power 6 for instance, can I make a device where RD is 10 power 6? Then I can go to actually very low power levels. Now, RD is 10 power 6 meaning what? Physically what does it mean? For 1 photon, it should give, this is, this is power per second, 1 photon it should give that many number of electrons per second. So, instead of going from, uh, you know, quantum efficiency I cannot change, but can I do something in the circuit, so that I produce more number of electrons. Can I produce more electrons? for 1 photon. So, that is the design of what is called as a avalanche photodiode. So, in an avalanche photodiode what you do is you adjust the uh, doping, it is a heavily doped system where you have P region, you have N region, you have the intrinsic region and then you have a heavily doped region here and this is what is called as a multiplicative region. And this region as because the doping is high, the electric field experienced in this region is really high. So, the electric field experienced by the electron in the hole in this P region is low, in the intrinsic region it goes high, in the multiplicative region it even goes higher and then it goes back to 0. So, this is what as a function of, uh, this is electric field as a function of this position. So, you have very high electric field set up there by applying the same reverse voltage, the doping is adjusted such that the electric field across this region is very high, which means that I have an electron and a hole generated here. This electron actually goes through this multiplicative region and in that it gains so much energy because it is experiencing a very large electric field that it creates impact ionization, which means the electron that was propagating through that region generates more electrons and each of that also generates more electrons until the time it propagates through that multiplicative region. So, one photon generated an electron hole pair, the generated electron moved through this very high electric field region and because it is experiencing a large electric field it got it gained a lot of energy and then generated impact ionization goes and kicks off more electron hole pairs by ionization by impact right and that gives rise to let us say a multiplicative factor m and that is what you uh, people do in, uh, in the construction of avalanche photodiode. So, it is creating an ava avalanche effect ok, a highly energetic electron generating more number of electron hole pairs. So, one photon has generated m electrons now. So, my I d is actually uh, R d times m times p n, where m is that multiplicative factor. Now, you can make avalanche photodiodes, uh, which can have multiplicative factors of even of the order of 10 power 3, 10 power 4 and so on. But what is required, what is additionally required? Of course, you need that specific doping to be done. So, a specific device to be fabricated such that you can apply hundreds of volts, 100 volt is the typical reverse voltage you apply and still it should not undergo a breakdown. That is why the doping has to be high, so that it does not undergo a breakdown. Okay. So, once you do that and if you want to have a multiplication factor, you have to apply this very large uh, avalanche or if you want to kick in the avalanche effect. So, avalanche photodiodes work for small reverse voltages also. 
but small reverse voltages it this m does not kick in because the energy is not sufficient for it to create impact ionization. So, you will start seeing the effect of the avalanche gain or multiplication gain if your reverse bias voltage goes to about 500 uh, sorry 100 volt and this is what people commonly use for single photon detection. You know in quantum communication these days the detectors that are used one way of doing the detection is uh, using an avalanche photodiode. So, what people do is they keep the reverse bias voltage to be let us say the threshold required for uh, uh, avalanche detection is 70 volt ok for the avalanche effect to start is 70 volt. So, they keep the voltage at something like 69 volt ok. So, that there is no avalanche effect normally and they want to pick the arrival time of a single photon which means that that single photon if I did not have the avalanche effect what will happen to that single photon it will absorb it will generate an electron hole pair and that electron hole pair may just get lost it may not come out of the system right. So, that is where you want to kick in the avalanche effect and most of these systems are triggered system they know when the single photon is arriving in the system. So, at that time they change this to 71 volt for instance and keep the avalanche effect on for some time until the photon has arrived and then you turn it off. So, during this time the avalanche effect ki kicks in. So, this is called as gated operation of uh, avalanche photodiode. You gate it based on the arrival time of the photon and when the photon arrives there is an electron hole pair generated, but that electron is now experiencing this multiplicative gain. So, you will definitely detect that single photon in the circuit. So, APDs are very well used for single photon detections in the gated why cannot I why do I need this gated detection why cannot I keep it on all the time uh, I know that the photons are generated the uh, photon is coming in only at this time why cannot I keep the uh, reverse voltage more than uh, 70 volt all the time There's something called dark current right you have uh, so that is another source of noise in a detector a detector is exposed to everything that is falling on it I mean it is it is exposed to light that is falling on it. So, detector does not distinguish whether it is the 1550 photon or 1310 photon or something like that right. You always have ambient light falling on it and ambient light has all the wavelengths in it. So, the detector will keep if you if you keep the avalanche effect on all the time you will start getting high current all the time because of the ambient light. So, that is what you want to avoid ambient light it should be low uh, gain and for the single photon it should be high gain. You know in the laboratory you typically ca uh, use calibrated wavelengths which says lambda 1310, lambda 1550, lambda 800, lambda 1000 and so on right. If I keep it at 1550 does it mean that if I put 1310 does not respond. So, why are you changing that lambda in a detector in an experiment? responsivity changes as a function of lambda and your calibration for different responsivity is different. So, there is an internal electronics in a detector which is reading out your uh, power value right that calibration has to change and that is why you are keeping on changing the lambda. So, that is about APD which will uh, offer you a multiplication gain. So, these are the three most common type of uh, detectors pin p n detectors we do not typically use p n junction we always use p i n pin detectors or APD detectors. So, the question is we are heavily doping the multiplicative region would that affect the diffusivity. So, because it is heavily doped uh, it actually becomes sluggish because uh, if it is heavily doped the electric field goes higher. So, ideally the electron should move faster, but the electron is not just moving it is involved in this process of creating impact ionization. So, now you are talking about the uh, uh, drift and uh, uh, sorry uh, the drift and the diffusivity of all these electrons right in the remaining region. So, typically the APD bandwidths are slightly smaller than the PD bandwidths you need to do something extra to get the same bandwidth because of these additional processes.